I don't like this part of your public services. So many users will be able to to comment. So it's it's not only a, I agree, I agree, but they, okay, they will the user the clients will complain. So then they will have to do something. Then we would have comparisons. This will give them. It will be much easier to to go from similar providers, but just looking at the what they have to agree on. So going from one provider to another, because this comparison will give them more information about what they agree with these terms of service. Okay, and then we would like to do visualization so that it is easy for normal users to understand these things. And for people that work in, for drafting these texts. And summaries would also be good because these are long texts. You would like maybe some summaries of those texts. So, <laughs> The project would include natural language processing, more particularly controlled natural languages. It will include, so this, this natural language processing will be in the part where you take the text into the machine, into the, into the logic uh, model. Then you would need knowledge representation specific for law, for concepts in, in, in law and in terms of services. And we need logics for understanding norms and actions. Actions are abundant in this uh, legal contract in my understanding. And then we want to do verification. So we want to verify requirements, properties of the user against the terms of services. Having this in place, then we could do monitoring. So a user could somehow monitor his own actions to see that it conforms with what he agreed with the terms of services. So you can ask if sequences of actions, are this okay with the terms of services that I agreed on? Yeah, so this would need a community behind and we will see soon more. And because we are aiming for the users, we want to be user friendly and ease of use. Now I will go into somehow intuitive how, how a user would would see this uh, this um, technology. How how the user will use this technology, the logos. So I said a new text, a new terms of service text is automatically read into a logical model. Then the requirements of the user are checked against this model, against this new terms of service. If all the requirements are satisfied by the, by the terms of service, then the user accepts the terms of service. Okay. So requirements regarding privacy or economical requirements, so amounts of money and so on. So until now the user does not do anything. So all, all should be automatic, this part. So the user should not see what happens there. But uh, we will go more into detail. So if requirements fail, then the user is provided with an explanation. What requirements fail and why do they fail from, from the terms of service? So all sorts of visualization, highlighting of the text, and then uh, Argumentation, for example, will be a, a big area where we can look into so to understand why this failure of the requirements comes. And then in the end, the user can still accept the terms of service. Yeah. Despite this uh, failure of the requirements of the product. So in pictures, I would, I would, I would draw it like this. So we have the terms of service in the beginning, and then we have a way to read these terms of services using controlled natural languages into a model, post model. And this would be two ways, because from the model I want to get back text, and from the text, uh, the model. So I, whatever I work on the model, I would like to be able to generate English or natural language text, explanations. Then the requirements are on the other side. 
and both requirements and the model come together into a verification engine, model checking engine. Which other yet yeah, answers yes, all your requirements are okay. <coughs> and then the user accepts the terms of services, or it answers no. And then a trace or an explanation is provided by the system. Maybe in a more visually friendly way. So this would involve techniques for visual visualizing these traces and making summaries of the text that are involved. Okay, so that part was uh, we were claiming it's a uh, we want it to be automatic, but let's see what can go wrong, so to say, in, in, in the story until now. So the system will inevitably be human-assisted. We will not be able to do everything automatic. It will be human-assisted. But how much human assistance is in there, I think this will depend on time, on how the system grows. And then you will you understand this during the talk. So, for example, one thing that can go wrong is when reading the text. And the natural language processing engine cannot parse some parts of the text. Or some parts of the text are ambiguous. So here is where the user has to interact with the system and help with the parsing or the disambiguation of this ambiguity in the text. Or just ignore parts of the course completely. So you say, OK, this cannot be done. Eventually, we need to take all the text into a model. So if something cannot be done, uh, it cannot be passed to something like this, then we just need to ignore it. Okay, this is somehow managed in the matter now. So then a non-expert user, a, a, a normal user, may access some online uh, resources from, from, from the LOTOS project. Yeah? So in these online databases, there may be terms of services which have already been read. I mean, it's not so often that terms of services appear and appear. And appear. Many users will use I iTunes, and they will want to check their requirements on the same iTunes terms of services. Well, they, once this terms of service has been read, then it can go into the online uh, system, and other users have access to it. So we don't need to redo this work over and over again. And then experts in the community can help when is ambiguation or with parsing. So with the new TOS, then if there are problems, experts from the community can help uh, yeah, with the parsing of the text. How about the requirements? Because we say that the user has to have some of the requirements, privacy requirements. How does he define these requirements? Well, for a normal user, it's not easy to define. This requirement eventually will be logic formulas. Yeah? You have to describe, write logic formulas well, of course, in a, in a natural language uh, way. But then the, the system, the, the, the community can provide templates, for example, for requirements. And you just fill in some parameters of the template. For the terms of services that already exist online, that have been treated by many uh, users, uh, so and they have been read there, there are already requirements that other users have. And then maybe you just choose from those requirements, those that you think, yeah, this is what I want usually to, to satisfy on these terms of service. On the iTunes, this is what seems natural for me as a requirement. So of course, uh, a user will have this wallet sort of say of requirements. That's where he keeps his requirements. And this is a big text, so we expect them to have big models. So existing requirements on in this online database or existing TOS, these have already been checked. This is what they want. So the requirements have already been checked somehow. So that you don't need to be on your machine. Then you can either do model checking on your own machine because you don't want to interact with the, with the online community, or you can do it through the community provided so to, uh, model checking system. So the community can provide distributed model checking system which gives you more computing power. So even new requirements for new tasks that you, it, 
you, you have private requirements that you don't want to share with others, you could at least use the computation power that the community provides. So there may be notions involving quantities or involving deadlines in these terms of services, all sorts of quantifiable notions, like privacy also. So you would like to have a quantifiable notion of privacy. So the requirements will be, checking requirements will give you a, an answer on a, on a scale, so to say. And so it's not a yes, no answer, but it will be a, an answer, a fuzzy answer on the scale, on the range. So here the user can have thresholds accepting privacy on some level or on a different level, depending on what is your expectation, how much privacy you are allowed to give away for your terms of services. <coughs> and in this setting, in this quantitative setting, explanations are more difficult to get. And visualization may help. I would say Lotus needs information designers to display this quantitative uh, information to the, to the normal users. So returning to the picture that we had before, these problems somehow, where do they fit in? So we said we have this online Lotus system that will help non-experts. So the models that already exist there, they would come into the place of the, yes, yeah, they, they will just be taken from the online system. And the requirements and requirement templates, they will just be taken again. So see that uh, in this online system, requirements need to be already satisfied on the models that they are defined. About the templates, they, they, we still need to have some discussion about that. About the template is not clear. So experts in the community may help read the terms of services. And to do verification, you can use the computing power from the community system. Now what are the technologies that I see that we need to use? Controlled natural languages, which are based on first order logic. This will be for the part of the reading the text. And we see more details. For the translation of the text, there is mature technology called grammatical framework, which is much like a functional language. Then for capturing the right legal terminology and relationships between this terminology, we would need some knowledge representation, some legal ontologies. These are also based on fragments of first order logic. Then for understanding the norms and the actions that are in legal contracts, the logics that are there, somehow you can summarize them as deontic logics or logics of actions, like propositional dynamic logic. Then for, for the verification part, I'm thinking of model checking and the temporal logics that come uh, there. But model checking is a general technique. You can do it with, with various logics. So in the end, there are, there are solutions based on rule-based reasonings, rule-based engines. And then more esoteric logics come into play, like weighted logics and real-time logics. Real-time logics for deadlines, weighted logics for all sorts of quantitative notions. Or multi-valued logics, fuzzy logics. So this would be for, this would be the more non-standard part. And the picture from before, Control natural languages will be up here when reading the text. The grammatical framework will be on the translation part of the terms of services. So once you have a model from, from a text, or whatever language it is, you would want to translate it automatically through the grammatical framework into various other languages that the grammatical framework can, can handle. So knowledge representation, norms, when dynamic logic and actions, these are all part of the models. And temporal logic <coughs> is what we will use maybe for 
verification. Okay. I will go a little more into detail. So automated reasoning. The most mature technology, in my opinion, for uh, uh, sorry, not automated reasoning, automated uh, automated reading. So the most mature technology, in my opinion, is controlled natural languages for that. And the technology, the, and what I'm thinking of is attempt of project, started in 1995 or something like that. What is called attempt of controlled English from Zurich University. And this is based on a powerful thing. Theory that they call discourse representation theory. And the book is now more than 10 years old. So, this is quite mature and expressive, and there is a, a good amount of tools around the Pento. This is a restricted natural language. So it is not natural language, but it is somehow restricted so that you can get a logical representation of that. It is not so clear how we will use controlled natural languages, how we will use attempto for, for the legal domain, but there is some work, uh, also from a person in uh, Zurich, related to the legal terminology. Text. So the controlled natural languages of attempt to control English, English, they are based on first order logic. And controlled natural languages, are, they are well known for, in, for engineers. Uh, so if you go to engineering companies, IBM specifications, they are in a very strict, uh, yeah, it is a controlled language, so the way of writing their specifications is not arbitrary English. But how to how to use it in law? This I don't I don't know works related to law. So how to how to go smooth from the terms of services that there exist out there to a controlled law language, so to say. And then how to combine this controlled natural languages with knowledge representation, because knowledge representation is essential for legal terminology to, to, be, to be related. How do we handle ambiguities in this controlled natural languages? Because controlled natural languages are, are supposed to not be ambiguous. They are supposed to be translated to logic. So ambiguities somehow are removed away in a controlled natural language. But ambiguities exist in legal text, so somehow, how do we handle ambiguities? These are questions that we need to look into. When it comes to, to the translation part, here in Göteborg, in Chalmers, the group on grammatical framework, they are having a very strong uh, theory there, and tools. Maybe, you know, there are about 20 languages or something are handled by grammatical framework. I know, know these people are working on some GIF. In fact, they should mention also Gayu there because uh, Arne Ranta, he's in formally speaking, not an employee of Chalmers, but Gayu. Mm -hmm. So it's good to mention both universities just to be politically correct. Okay. Yeah. But there are more than 20 languages, yes. Mm -hmm. Grammatical framework is, uh, is based on a, on a very, so to say, powerful theory on intuitionistic type theory, dependent types. Okay, and then the, the good thing is that there is connection between this attempt to control English and grammatical framework. So whatever you can write with attempt to control English, you can go through grammatical framework and get translation into any other languages. So you can do your work in English, as the terms of services is there, and then you get your translations into all the languages that the grammatical framework handles. Knowledge representation for law. So we need to capture relationships between terminologies in law, in the, in, in, in the legal text. And this we will do with knowledge representation or 
description logics or ontologies, as you may hear about. But we need ontologies for the legal domain. There is good experience with ontologies for medicine or biology, okay? Like or OWL is the widespread language for building ontologies for the web. This may be everyone knows. But for the legal domain, I don't know so much. But there is a uh, work. So there was a big project, Esterella, where they built a uh, a language for interchanging texts. This LKIF language. Okay. Yeah, so in this noise representation, I'm not so, so, uh, I don't know so much what happens there. So this is, here is where I will have to investigate more. But the, it is good to keep an eye on the Leibniz Center as well from Amsterdam and uh, on this blog, Vox Populi, from Cornell University. There is a version of OWL with the description logic. You have a logical. There is OWL the dash DL. Yes. Yeah. So for ontology. Yeah. So OWL is a is a language, but it is based on description logics because I said I I will, I will tell you what logics there there are in this. Uh, if we want to automate uh, legal, uh, if we want to automate the work in. The work in terms of services, what logics are there? So for noise representation, it is called description logics. And there are many variants of description logic, depending on their expressive power and then depending on their computational complexity. So how hard is it to make inferences out of an ontology in some kind of description logic? Well, in medicine, it seems they are very happy with DL light. DL light is very computational. Well, it has very good computational complexity, very low. Whereas OWL has good expressiveness. Computational complexity is a little higher than the other. These are established fields, so there is a handbook in description logic. And the group of young horrors in Oxford, they are doing a lot of work there also, so that can be linked. How about normative notions in uh, terms of services? So standard notions, standard normative notions like rights, permissions, obligations, or prohibitions. Yeah, in, in natural languages, they, that's an idea. Oh, per, rights could appear like may do something, permit me to do something. Obligations can be indicated by words like must, or should, or is obliged. Prohibitions by not allowed. The ontic logic is the logic that uh, has been studied for normative notions. So for but and it has been studied for a long time, like since the fifties, by philosophers and by law people. And you can see more information on this theonticlogic.org. But only recently it appeared. Uh, it, it had a handbook of the ontic logic and normative systems. Okay. The Deon conferences are also good. But uh, other notions not so standard, like powers or governing policies or exceptions, delegation. So these are not so much treated in, in the theories that they exist, in my opinion. So I think more work needs to be done there. Yeah. But they are important in terms of services. In, in, my, in my opinion, actions abound in these legal texts. You are obliged to do an action, or you are forbidden to do some other action. So actions appear there all the time, and in various complexities. Other simple actions, or rather complex actions, or actions which are parametrized by, a, by a, an amount, or actions that have some duration. Actions are well studied in computer science. So they are studied in dynamic logics, propositional dynamic logics for regular expressions, for example. 
And then recently, the ontic logic and dynamic logic, they have been combined because they realized that these actions are important. So now we can look, since 20 years or so, we can look at dynamic deontic logics, all sorts of variants of this dynamic deontic logic, combination of actions and norms to dynamic deontic logic. And a completely different field in computer science, which is called process algebra, they are looking at structures of actions, how you can build actions, complex actions from smaller actions. And there, there is a very good tool set which is called MCRL2. And I think this project will work with that tool set because it is a very mature uh, work. So when describing actions, I think this is what we would like to know. They are also interested in temporal order, so to say. What comes before what, or uh, when actions should be done, so to say. So with temporal uh, logics, you can express notions like a property holds in the future at some point. It holds at some point in the future where it holds all the time from now on in all the time points. So temporal logic sees time as a linear sequence of time points. And, and now there are combinations of deontic logic and temporal logic too. So, so there we have good works to build on. So the verification part. I think th this is where we will work with model checking, which is a very mature uh, technique from computer science. So this, uh, this is a technique where you take a software system, uh, a, a program, and the specification in the in the in the logic, usually a temporal logic specification, and you do model checking. You check if the specification is respected by the program. But in our case, we would like to take the specification, which are requirements of privacy, for example. I don't know how we will describe that yet. And we want to take the model of the terms of services and do the check of the, these requirements. But I guess we can adapt the techniques that already are there from computer science. Yeah, so model checking checks the logical formula against the model. And it gives an answer yes or no. And when it is no, it gives usually a counterexample or a trace or an explanation of why this is the case. This is very computationally intensive. And it depends on the dimension of the model. Yes? Is model checking an NP complete mo uh, problem? Uh, model checking uh, depends on what logic you are working with. Yeah, it depends on what logic you are working with. And depending on the logics, there are various degrees. And uh, the fact that it is exponentially hard, for example, it is not necessarily bad in practice. So you, do, you don't always reach this uh, upper limit. But in practice, they can be good. Uh, behavior of the model checker. But it, NP complete is not uh, no, it's not. It's so low. Uh, so it is, it is higher than NP complete. Uh, it depends more on the size of the model because usually the property yeah. you want to prove are quite standard and quite short. Mm. So it's not a big deal. Okay. okay, so having model checking in place, model checking is a technique, it's a push button technique, so to say, where you give the formula and the logic and you push the button and it should come up after some time with yes or no. So having this, you can think of negotiation of contracts or of terms of services. Now there is the user and the service provider, but you can think of them as the same, two parties in the contract. The user checks the requirements. Okay, so negotiation can happen only before accepting the terms of service, yeah? And only when some of the requirements fail the terms of services. Yeah? So you have some requirements that fail, it means you are not satisfied with the terms of service, you cannot accept yet. So what you will do, you will use the explanation that the model checking gives you to change the terms of service. And then you send back these terms of service that you now like because it respects all your requirements, you send it back to the service provider. And they do the same thing. 
Well, when does it stop this going back and forth? Every, each check their own requirements. Well, this can go back and forth. The service provider just changes the terms of service in the same in the same way. Yeah, so here we would need some way to stop this negotiation. So we need a measure of redundancy somehow. How much change has been made into this new contract? Is it big enough to to be yeah, to redo the, the verification again or is uh, uh, small that I can accept now this new terms of service, though it is not exactly the one that I that my requirements would like to satisfy. So the user can in, can come and stop the negotiation process. There can be also notion, uh, simple notions of negotiation. Only some parameters uh, they, they they can be changed in, 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 in the text. Only some deadlines maybe or only some quantities in the text can be changed. And yeah, so this is simple uh, changes in this kind of negotiation. I think it will be easy to to do. But how about privacy requirements? So, in my opinion, privacy is more difficult to check. So when and then, <coughs> terms of services are a lot about privacy nowadays. In my understanding. So again, to our picture, negotiation will come in place. Uh, when you have a no answer from the verification. So you can change the model again. Well, when you have drafting, I, 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 I said drafting at some point, drafting also comes with verification. So the person that tries to make a new term of, of service, it always verifies against some properties that he wants in the terms of service to satisfy. And then whenever there, there is a no answer, he goes in this changing of the model again. So somehow negotiation is related to drafting. And then I mentioned monitoring. Verification can also be used for monitoring. But monitoring is opposed to negotiation is done after you accept the term of service. So what, what does monitoring mean? In, in my opinion. So once you accept the terms of service, you must somehow buy, you must respect that uh, what, what the terms of service requires, specifies. So what the user can do, can describe the sequence of actions and give it to the monitoring engine and uh, ask if this sequence of actions is okay with the terms of service, uh, with, with the toast that I accepted. Or you can ask quantitative evaluations of this sequence of actions. Will I break the terms of service so, so much? Or uh, the, the yes, or, or the costs are not so big. So I can, uh, I can do this sequence of actions because breaking the toss will require these costs which are not necessarily so big, in my opinion. So then the user can still do that action, even though it breaks the terms of service. So for non-experts, this online LOTOS can still help with already predefined sequences of action. So you can tell, if you accepted iTunes, then don't do this uh, sequence of action somehow. Don't download and then send to your friend or something like this. And then you can provide also templates of sequences of actions in which you only insert some parameters. So monitoring comes after accepting a toss. And I put also comparisons here. So when you accept two terms of services, or you take two terms of services, and both of them satisfy your requirements, and you accept, you would like somehow to compare these terms of services to understand which of them you would like to go with. So which of the, these two terms of services, which somehow both of them respect your requirements, you would like to go with. Maybe some, okay, here maybe quantitative notions. Um, come into play. Okay, so if we populate this uh, diagram with those logics that we, we've seen before, this is like the system that we get from here. With verification there in the middle, and we 
point into the moment, make you go into the next station. We would have a layer of online databases of models and requirements provided by the community. Yes, so I guess this uh, ends uh, this uh, short uh, run through this project. There will be another workshop, so to say, after this. This is what uh, we're discussing with the organizers. We, they came up with this idea. But in the, in, and in the workshop, what I want is to have discussions with you, and then you can give comments about pro and contra. Yes? Can you come back to uh, graph? I, I have some comments on that. Yes. Now we are maybe over time, so if you want to come, uh, 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 or maybe if, if, yeah, if you can also, because now maybe we have to go for the coffee break, and then yeah. come after, maybe <laughs> if you can keep your uh, question. Because this is what we want to do in the workshop, to have discussions. You to say somehow uh, what you think would go wrong in this project, or you to say what you expect from this project, so do you expect something else? Or maybe you, you want to try tools that are related to the technologies, so tools that I made links with the apps, right? I can, we can go directly to the web page. Maybe you can give ideas where to apply Locos, how, how, how it can, could be applied. So when is it? Uh, it it's in 15 minutes, oh. in the same place. Okay, thank you.